And breaking news to bring you, President Putin appears to have broken his silence on the uh, apparent death of Prigozhin and the plane crash because we are hearing from Reuters that Putin sends his condolences to uh, Prigozhin, the founder of Russia's Wagner Group. He sends his uh, condolences to Prigozhin's family. Just to caveat that by saying this is what we're hearing from Reuters. Uh, the, the Reuters reports go on to say that Putin uh, has, says, I've known Prigozhin since the 90s. Uh, we will look at what investigators say. And Putin says, Prigozhin was a talented businessman. Uh, and expertise will take time. So presumably saying there that it will take time to uh, establish based on that investigation, looking at what investigators say. But this, again, just to reiterate, this is coming from Reuters, uh, who are reporting that this is what Putin's saying. And of course, this is uh, after Putin uh, made no mention of Prigozhin or the plane crash when he spoke a few hours ago at a summit uh, via video link. So this is the first mention that uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin appears to have made of the plane crash and of Prigozhin. And according to Reuters, Putin has sent his condolences to Prigozhin's family. Well, let's speak now to our security correspondent, Frank Gardner. Frank, now this suggestion that it was a missile being reported by Reuters, which we brought when it broke a, a little while ago, that's apparently from a US source. Yeah, there, this is an unnamed U.S. official who has said this. And there's still, I think, a fair degree of confusion over this because British defence sources that I spoke to earlier this morning, and that was some hours ago, thought it was more likely to have been a device on board the plane. I don't think there's any question that it was an accident. Planes, modern planes like that, just simply don't fall out of the air. Um, the other thing is that if it was a surface to air missile, the chances are that the plane would have been blown up and blown apart or at least disintegrated um, high up in the air. As it was, we saw it spiraling out of control, um, trailing smoke in that video, um, but was still intact. So I'm not sure that I would go with the idea that it was shot down by a missile, but uh, we may never know because um, if you agree with the assumption that is held in most Western capitals that this was an act of assassination, um, then the very state, Russia, that is um, carrying out the investigation are the ones who are suspected of being behind this. But that said, there is no proof uh, of that. Um, so President Putin has said we're going to have to wait for the investigation, but it's their investigation. It's not a neutral, independent one coming in from outside. We're not talking about Swiss investigators crawling over the black box and looking at forensic details. It's Russia investigating what happened on its own soil, and as Frank, it is entitled to do. And Frank, in the meantime, speculation continues and other theories as to how the plane fell out of the air aren't being ruled out. For example, a bomb being on board. Well, that's what I mean about a device being put on board. I think that's probably far more likely because whatever it was was not strong enough, was not powerful enough to blow it out of the air. Now, Russia has got very powerful air defences. They're not perfect, as we've seen by the amount of Ukrainian drones that are penetrating Ros Moscow's airspace and getting into the capital. This plane was brought down roughly halfway between um, Moscow and St. Petersburg, where it was flying to. Interestingly, there were two planes linked to Yevgeny Prigozhin that, um, that are in play, as it were. This one was brought down. A second one has recently landed in Baku, the Azerbaijani capital, but there's no suggestion that Prigozhin was on board that. So Russia hasn't yet produced any visible proof of Prigozhin's death, but they are saying he was definitely on board, as was Dmitry Utkin, who was the co-founder of, co of the Wagner Group back in 2014. Frank, thank you. That's our security correspondent, Frank Gardner, there. And uh, just to reiterate some of uh, the, the information we brought you that broke uh, in the past couple of minutes that has been uh, verified by the BBC now. This is comments made by Putin uh, commenting for the first time on the plane crash that is presumed to have killed uh, Prigozhin. Uh, Putin said uh, Prigozhin was a talented person and expressed his condolences to the families of everyone killed. 
Well, as we've been hearing over the past few minutes and hours, there has been endless speculation on social media about the crash. And Olga Robinson from BBC Verify has been sifting through many of the posts. Yevgeny Prigozhin, the Wagner mercenary chief, is presumed dead after his plane crashed in Russia on Wednesday. The Russian aviation agency says Prigozhin and Wagner co-founder Dmitry Utkin were both on this list of passengers on the plane. But that didn't stop speculation on social media that he might have been on another plane at the time. So what do we know about the crash? Well, data from the flight radar tracking service shows that the plane linked to Prigozhin took off somewhere um, northwest of Moscow yesterday afternoon and it was flying towards St. Petersburg and then it disappeared over Tver region um, 300 kilometers northwest of Moscow and that flight data also shows that uh, at around 1519 GMT there was a sudden drop of altitude. This is corroborated by video from eyewitnesses that we verified earlier and here you can see the plane falling from the sky quite rapidly. And then the plane crashed uh, not far from the village of uh, Kruzhenka. This satellite image um, that shows the aftermath, um, you can see here bits of wreckage and tents as well. So what caused the crash? Eyewitnesses say they heard the sound of explosion before the plane started falling. This has led to speculation that the plane may have been shot down by Russian air defense. These unverified pictures showing small holes in the fuselage of the plane have been used by some on social media as evidence to support this theory. But the pictures are not of great quality, as you can see, and that it makes it really difficult to conclude what they actually show. Another theory that has been gaining traction suggests that there was an explosion on board the plane. Here's a post from a popular Russian telegram channel. Source, the explosive device on Prigozhin's plane was placed in the landing gear compartment. This is the, uh, one of the theories being looked at by the investigation. Yet so far, there is no convincing visual evidence to support this. And that means we'll continue investigating and bring you updates when we can. Olga Robinson from BBC Verify.